Thanks for being with me uh, uh, today, Kevin. Uh, we're talking about outreach and evangelism, and uh, I, I want to just get your perspective, because in the series we're talking about everyday disciples, and, and statistically, 89%, hard to believe, 89% of people have never shared the gospel with anyone um, ever. And so I know you're an everyday disciple. And so I want just to capture your story a little bit about um, evangelism. And, and so would you, would you tell me, first of all, like, how did you hear the gospel in your life? Yeah. So I grew up in the church, and um, I went through the motions. I followed my family's faith. And uh, I went to college and started to experience the, the gospel. People were radically sharing the gospel with each other, um, people that they didn't know. And that challenged me to grow in my faith and say, Lord, I want to surrender everything to you. And, he, and once I did that, it was like all the, the bonds broken. Yeah, so even in your own life, you, you use the word um, radically sharing, you know, the, the gospel with you. So they modeled that to you. You saw someone actually share the gospel with you that made an impact yes yeah when when someone shared with me even though i was at a christian school um and was sharing how to share the gospel with me it challenged me and then they asked me to come with them and go out and i was like oh no i don't want to do that i'm, I'm really scared i'm yeah. nervous i don't feel adequate i don't feel equipped even though i grew up in the church i was listening to the sermons every week um but if you don't have the relationship with Jesus, it, it's going to be super yeah. hard to do that. Yeah, so it's so true. You know, uh, having that personal relationship with Christ is everything. But you are also sharing uh, a couple examples of why people don't share the gospel um, because of fear or not feeling adequate or trained. Um, so share, Kevin, you know, how did you overcome some of that? You know, how did you get yourself equipped? How did you overcome kind of the fear in sharing the gospel? Sure. Um, I met this guy named Caleb in physical therapy school, and he discipled me. Um, he was very intentional in the way that he did it. And I was intrigued that he was telling me every week he was going out and sharing the gospel and all these stories and revival that are happening in people in Grand Rapids. And I was like, I want that. I, I want that too. Um, but I didn't feel equipped. I, I've never s seen that besides in, in corner, at Cornerstone. Um, and I didn't realize that I could do that as a disciple. I didn't realize that I could have the power to change someone's life. And he took me with him one day. And I was really scared, you know. He, you, all these thoughts, like I don't have what it takes. I'm nervous. Uh, I don't feel equipped. Um, the, the devil just wants to throw these thoughts in your flesh, you know, in, in your mind and, and want you to eat these things up. Um, but once you go out there and share with the first person, it's just like you're just having a conversation with them. Um, it's just about people. Yeah. Um, can, can you give an example, uh, Kevin, of, of when sharing the gospel went really well? Have yeah. you had opportunity to lead someone to Christ and pray with them to receive Jesus? Yeah, actually, I'll tell the story that happened at my doorstep. Um, I was walking around our neighborhood. At your doorstep? Yeah. At your house? Yes. Just showed up? Yes. <laughs> he, typically, people say no when this happens, but a salesman came up, okay? He was trying to sell me a right. guard, and I'm like, I'm not interested, but there was something in my mind. The Holy Spirit convicted me in that moment to say, you need to keep listening to this guy. He's going through a lot. And all I did was just listen to the bug guard pitch. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm not interested in that right now. But tell me about yourself. Tell me what's going on. Like, you're out here walking around. That must be pretty hard to do that. And like, a lot of people are rejecting you. Um, like, how, what, does that, what does that make you feel like? Yeah. And then we just got talking, right? And I just listened to a story. He was struggling with a lot. And um, eventually, I invited him in to dinner. And I shared the three circles with him. I had this app, I pulled it up, I was like, hey, can I share something that's changed my life? Uh, because it can change yours too. Yeah. And uh, like having him in a random stranger for dinner, uh, I sh gave him my Bible, because I didn't ha own a any other Bible. I was like, hey, this is the only Bible like I have that I'm not using, right. you can have it. I had all my writing in it, and I gave that to him. And um, the next day he quit his job and he was like, I need to find something else to do. So he went back to his hometown. 
Um, and I have his number, so I've been connecting with him since. But uh, that and, and that's a great example, too, of an everyday disciple because all of us have people come to the door at different times selling something, and you right. just simply said, no, I'm not interested in your product, but tell me more about yourself. Yeah. And then see what the, how the Spirit leads in that yeah. moment. You, you know, Kevin, um, again, I, I know for a lot of people watching this, they're listening, they go, I want to be that, I want to do that like Kevin, I wish that was me. But again, they have their fears and they feel not equipped. And so I guess if you, if you could just give an encouragement, if you could say something to people who have all those fears or excuses, um, what would you say to them as to why should they take a step and get equipped and step into sharing the gospel with someone? I think you need to share the gospel because it's a command. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Um, and I want to love him. And I think it's, it's really hard to see a lot of people in the church, because I was one of them most of my life, of not sharing the gospel, not focusing on the lost, because that's what Jesus did. Like, if we look at his life, he went to the lost. He went to the people who were hurting. He healed the sick. Like, he, he cast out demons, and he gave his disciples that power. And there are a lot of lost people, even in West Michigan. Um, and as soon as we, we pray, Lord, I just want to have your eyes. I want to see the way you see. I want to hear the way you hear. And like, show me these people in my life that are lost. Give me discernment to, of what to say. Give me courage and boldness to step out of my, my, my comfort zone and, and share because I want to surrender to you. Yeah. I want to know you more. Wasn't that good? And uh, the reason I did, because sometimes I know you look at the preacher and, and you know, well, the preacher is supposed to say these things, but Kevin is an ordinary, everyday disciple like you. And, and so I want you to know one of the ways to respond to this message, um, Matthew and Kevin both have offered to take you with them. So if you're here and you want to uh, just take one step, um, Kevin's willing to say, come on, I'll just like Caleb did in his life. And Matthew, again, they'll let you go with them to help you with some of that anxiety and, and watch them. Kevin, are you, Kevin, you want to just stand so people know where to find you. So afterwards, you can go find Kevin. And, uh, <laughs> but here's the thing. Did you get it? You're not going to feel like it. Every one of you is not saying, well, I want to go do that. It's not about a feeling. It's about obedience. And when you obey, that's when the Holy Spirit guides you and helps you. You've got to take that first step of obedience. In Romans 10, 14, it says, but how can, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe?